In this video, we are picking up another important topic that's known as operator precedence. So often you'll see expressions, arithmetic expressions written, and it would have different operators. So unless you know the precedence of operators, you may end up evaluating it wrongly. Let's understand at a broad level what are different operators and how their hierarchy is built. So parentheses would always be on the top of the hierarchy, followed by exponentiation, which is like raising something to the power of something. Then we have the common arithmetic operations like multiplication, division, and we also have a modulus operator which returns the remainder upon division. Now, for all the cases when we have equal precedence for multiple operators, an expression will be evaluated from left to right. It will become clearer as we go through some examples. Followed by multiplication, division, and modulus operators are the addition and subtraction operations. Again, they have equal priority, so in an expression, they'll be evaluated from left to right. Then comes the bitwise AND and bitwise OR. In some time, we'll be discussing what these operators are and how they're supposed to be. Then comes the comparison operators. These typically result into a Boolean outcome. So these are less than, less than, or equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to, equal to. Remember in Python, double equal to actually compares equality and a single equal to sign is an assignment. This exclamation followed by an equal to sign is a not equal to, and then we have more comparison operators. Moving on, we have logical and, that comes first, and then comes the logical or, and then comes the assignment operators. So let's look at some of the examples where we use these operators and we look at the operator precedence. So if you see this expression, it is five plus two multiplied by three. Should it be evaluated like we add five and two first? That gives us a seven, and then we multiply a three. So the answer should be 21, not really. If you saw the hierarchy just now, multiplication takes precedence over addition. So first the multiplication between two and three would happen. That leads to six, and then to the six, we'll be adding a five. So the answer should be 11 and not 21. Here you go, you see the answer is 11. Now let's take another expression. We have parentheses here, and you remember parentheses were at the top of the hierarchy. So this will be executed first. Whatever inside parentheses comes will be executed first. We'll do eight plus two, that's 10. Then we have a division operator and an exponentiation operator. Remember, exponentiation has the second highest priority. After parentheses get executed, you are going to execute the exponentiation. So we already have a 10 in the numerator. We have a two raised to the power two, that's four in the denominator. Now, once these two are evaluated is when we are going to apply the division operator and 10 divided by four is going to give us 2.5. That's what the answer is. Let's take another example. We have three variables, A, B, and C, and they have the values 10, three, and five assigned respectively. And we are evaluating an expression that compares between division and multiplication. Remember, division and multiplication have the same precedence, but the expression will be evaluated from left to right. So you'll first divide A by B, and whatever you get as the result, you're going to multiply C to it. So A divided by B, that's 10 divided by 3, would give us 3.33. And to that, we're going to multiply 5. The answer should be something like a 16.66. That's what we get. Now we have an expression where we have multiplication and exponentiation. Of course, exponentiation has a much higher priority, so you will take the exponent of three first, three raised to the power two, that leads to nine, and nine will be then multiplied with the two, that would result into an 18, that's what we get. Now the ones that we're going to look at now are slightly tricky and we'll spend more time talking about these. So we have A that has been assigned a value five and B which has been assigned a value of three. Since we are going to look at bitwise operators, we'll have to convert the values into their binary. So the binary of five is one zero one and binary of three is 0, 1, 1. Then we have an expression which says A and B are 1. This 1 in binaries would be represented as 0, 0, 1. I can write that here, that's 0, 0, 1 in binary. So now, and, or, these are the two operators we have, but if you remember the precedence hierarchy, the bitwise and comes first, and then comes the bitwise or. So we'll be first evaluating A and B, and whatever will be the output of this expression will be put as an or with this 0, 0, 1 and finally we'll get a result. So let's look at this in a step-by-step -step way, spending a little more time on this piece. Before we solve that specific expression, let's just quickly understand the AND operation and OR operation, both for bitwise and logical. So when we have one AND one, both the operands are ones, then this bitwise AND results a one. Otherwise, when you have a zero AND one, one AND zero or zero AND zero, it evaluates to zero. Pretty similar is the case with logical and 
if you have a true and a true, it evaluates to true. But whenever you have a combination of a true and false, or a false and false, it will always lead to false. Similarly, the logical OR operation, even if one of the operands is 1, would lead to a 1 as the outcome. Only when both the operands are zeros is when it leads to a 0. Pretty much is the case with the logical OR. When you have either of the operands as true, the outcome is true. Only when both the operands are false, it leads to a false. But there's a fundamental difference between how these operate, and we'll just discuss that in some time. Let's head back to our example. So this is the example we were trying to solve. First of all, remember we are going to evaluate A and B first, and then we'll evaluate OR between whatever is the output here and this one. So, so A and B. Quickly referring to the AND table, this is how it is supposed to decide. Let's put these numbers in place. So we have 1 and 1, that's what we've put here. 0 and 1, that's what we've put here. 1 and 0, that's what we've put here. Now, looking at this table, 1 and 1 would lead to a 1, 0 and 1 would lead to a 0, and 1 and 0 would also lead to a 0. So the output of this would be 0, 0, 1. Now you got 0, 0, 1 within itself is 1. That's the binary representation of number 1. We are putting it as an OR with 1. Let's see what happens. So 0, 0, 1, OR 0, 0, 1. Obviously, if you want to write it like this in a detailed way, you can get it through the OR table because now we are performing an OR operation. Let's write it. So we are taking 1, OR 1, 0, OR 0, and again, a 0, OR 0. Notice we evaluate it from left to right. That's how we have written it. Now, if you evaluate these using this table, this would be a 1, this would be a 0, and this would again be a 0. So you get a 0, 0, 1 as the answer. What is 0, 0, 1? That's nothing but 1. So the answer to the expression you saw should be 1. Let's check it. So we'll just run this, and the answer should be 1. That's what we're getting. Now, there's a slight change in the expression. We have swapped the position of OR and AND. So what we have written here is that first from left to right, we see an OR, and then we have an AND. So actually, the position from left to right does not matter here and will be evaluated first here as well. We will first be evaluating B and 1, and whatever we get as an output would be put as an OR with A. Let's see how we do this properly. So here's the problem that we are referring to. We have 5, 3, and this is how the expression was. Remember, we'll be evaluating the bitwise AND first. So let's refer to the AND table, and B has 0, 1, 1 as the representation. This 1 is represented as 0, 0, 1. We discussed that already. So if we put it from right to left, this is how we'll read it. 1 and 1, 1 and 0, and 0 and 0. Why? Because the first three here, first operand here, comes from B. 0, 1, 1. The second operand comes from this 1, which is 0, 0, 1. And using the AND table, we can say this is going to be 1. And this is going to be 0, this is also going to be 0, so your representation is 0, 0, 1. Now, this is something that we are putting here, and there is an OR with 1, 0, 1. Let's just put that in the order. Looking at the OR table now, we get to this stage. So, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. That's the first operand, and then we have a 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1. Using the OR table, this is going to be 1. This is going to be 0 because both are zeros, and this is 1 and 0, even if one of them is 1. The answer is 1 as per R. So this is going to be 101. But 101 is the representation for 5. So the answer to the second question should be 5. Let's try this out. Here we go. The answer is 5. Now let's talk about logical AND and OR operations. So we have X as true, Y as false, Z as true. Logical operations are performed between the booleans. So we have true, false, and true. When we say AND, OR, remember, in logical AND and OR as well, AND had a higher precedence. So when we write true and false, as per the table that we saw, that evaluates to false. And then we are putting that false as or with true, that's Z. So false or true is true. The answer should be true here. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between bitwise and and the logical and, or same goes for the or operations. Let's understand that quickly. So the logical operations do something that's known as short circuiting. Basically, in a logical AND operation, if the first operand is false, the result is already determined to be false. Remember, you get a true only when both the operands are true. So if the first operand is determined to be false, it's known to be false, you don't even have to check the second operand. You can skip that. That's what logical AND does. Similarly, for the logical OR operation, if the first operand is true, the result is already determined to be true. Why? Because even if one of the operands is true, 
the outcome is going to be true. So it does not even evaluate the second operand if the first operand is found to be true. So this is somewhat smart, I would say. Let's look at some expressions and try to understand. So we generally would be using these with some conditionals and here we are taking an example of if else. So generally how the if else works is that if checks for a condition, if that evaluates to true, that enters the if block. If not, then it enters the else block. Let's say we have a variable x which has a value 8 and variable y which has a value 9. Now if we talk about bitwise operation, it's going to look at these conditions and then give an output. So the first condition is, is x greater than 10? The answer is no, it's false because x is 8 and it's less than 10. So it evaluates to false. Bitwise and would still check the second expression. It will check if y is less than 10. Even though technically, the moment this became false, we didn't have any need to evaluate this because this overall condition is going to be false. And we could have directly come to else and print it. It still checks this, finds us the result that, okay, this is true. But since the first condition was false, it will remain a false and the answer would be invalid entry. That's what we get. On the other hand, if this was a logical and, the moment it checks the first condition is false, it would not check the next condition. It will straight away get this, okay? Coming to the bitwise or and logical or, we have a variable p which has a value 9. We have a variable q which has a value 8. We are saying p greater than 5. So, is p greater than 5? The answer is yes, it's true. Because p is 9 and of course it's greater than 5. So if it's known to be true, when we are doing an or operation, we don't actually have to check the second condition. Irrespective of whatever it is, even if it's true or false, if one of the operands is true, the answer is going to be true. So you'll be printing what's there in the if block. But bitwise or would check both the conditions. It'll check, okay, Q is less than 10. That's again true. And then it'll say valid entry. On the other hand, if you were doing the same thing using logical or, it'll just check the first condition. And if it evaluates to true, it doesn't have to check the next one. That's the case. So I hope you get better understanding of these operators and how the bitwise and logical operators work. Operator precedence might come up as an important topic at times in quizzes.